All right, bro. I'm back in California, man. Yes, sir. Back in California. It's been and, and you another year older. Another year older. Twenty four came in. A surprise. I did That was that was wild. That was y'all, y'all set me up. Like, y'all set me up. Yeah, yesterday was a full day, so I ran the marathon yesterday. But it all was also a part of a setup we had uh, to surprise Joshua for a welcome back and and for a welcome back and his birthday, which was on. The 16th, shout out to his girlfriend, Bimmy, for setting that up. Shout out the to greatest, my greatest. girlfriend, Emma, for driving everywhere. That was a rough drive, bro. Yeah, to distract him. <laughs> but I think it was great for both of us. A significant day for me completing my first marathon. And then it was cool that the whole family was here to yeah. come hang out. Shout out to my boy, Joey, was here too. And then it was significant for Joshua because his birthday, he's back. But that's a huge mile, huge milestone living in another state like New York, working for the armory for three months. So does this feel like surreal just to be back low key? Yeah. I, I, for the past three months have they've been, they were the past three months have been long, but they've also like have flown by and haven't yeah. had time to really think about everything. It does feel weird to be back, but also just feels so much better, bro. Like sleeping in a twin bed is not a move at all. Yeah, like, it sounds any, like bro, sleeping in a twin bed, it's twin bunk bed, bro. Like is not a move. Sleeping in a full size bed is so much better now. And just to have like space, a backyard, all that type of stuff, bro, is just so much better. If that's supposed to be real though, like the be because like I was saying, three months is an ample time to get comfortable. I just got comfortable and then I'm plucked out again and back here in Eastville. So like it's kinda but it's cool to be back, bro. It's cool to be back. I love I love California. Love hey, man. West Coast, the best coast. You know what they say? That's the truth. That's the truth. Let's get into it, though. Because I'm Joshua Potts, Mr. Possible, always with a brother with the same mother, Aaron Potts, super hot Potts. And you're watching and listening to your favorite two black runners every single. Two black Tuesday. As you can tell, my voice is, I, think, <laughs> I don't know how my voice is gone from running a marathon, but my voice is gone. That stuff, that that joint, that stuff hits you different when you're in a marathon. My, I, my voice is gone. I think your that Two Black Tuesday was probably a perfect representat- representation of how the marathon got it went for you yesterday. You know what I mean? Hey, man. Like, I we, gotta, we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about it, man. I would love to talk to more people that run the marathon because I don't think that I don't think anybody walks away from the marathon without some, without some taking some hits, bro. I remember, so my high school coach, Coach Cummings, he ran his first marathon, I believe when I was the first year that he coached me, I think. I think it was either, it was, it was either a sophomore year or in my junior year, second year. I remember, I think the same thing like happened to, to, what happened to you happened to him. Cramped up? Yeah, like cramped up, like full, like, Full, just legs and it was just like horrible first time then like the next one he ran it he like won it he won the marathon because he just did like a small one i think like in santa cruz or like catalina i think it was catalina island he, oh he, he yeah. ran that one and he won so like my boy ian did that one and he won hey yes yeah, so there you go there you go so wait let's take him through let's just take him through the story bro if you guys don't know aaron's been training for the la marathon we've been talking about it for at least about like a while, bro. Three months now, you feel me? Like, this has been a long buildup. About two weeks ago, about a month ago, things weren't going right, but he was confident in himself. He, he knew he was going to get it done. He's I been did. running for 29 years, you know, 20 years. Like, he, he's about this. Came to the day, LA Marathon, was doing questions on the run. That was always part of the plan. And uh, go ahead, tell what how the race nah. go. Honestly... When I, when I really think about it, I mean, I would say that, shoot, <laughs> definitely uh, just running my entire life definitely came through with me, through for me. Um, just getting to the race, having to get up so early. We up at 350 to drive down uh, to, to, L- to LA to get there for the race. And it was cool. As soon as I got there, like, the community hits like I'm walking up to Dodger, like I get dropped off and I'm walking up to Dodger Stadium and another guy, he's like, he's like, yo, he's like in his car, he's like, you going up to check in? I was like, yeah, bro, come through, cause he didn't, he didn't know like yeah. where to go. I was like, yeah, and we, I just walked with him the whole way up. We were just, he was just talking, getting to know him. So like immediately, 
from the get go, I was tapped in with that type of community you hear about in the marathon where everybody is just supporting each other mm-hmm. and like helping each other. And then from there, you know, I didn't really warm up like much, you know, you're about to run so far. And I was in the open corral, which means that I was behind a, a B, C, D, E Jeez. corral. So I was all the way in the back, but I found my way to make it up to the front of that corral just cause like, like I wasn't planning to go out there and run five thirties. I wasn't even planning to run under six minutes. So like, it wasn't like I was going to sprint, but I couldn't be behind someone running like eight or nine minutes. Yeah, yeah. That would have been tough. So like the first half, so when we did, went out. Wait, did you run, did you have like a jacket on in the beginning or did you just? So I, I had a, I had a Hoka jacket, but. You just threw it? Yeah. I mean, I did actually put stuff in gear check, but. I was like, I threw the jacket and then I have my LA Marathon, like the free shirt you get. I'm sorry, LA Marathon. That shirt, <laughs> that shirt wasn't really like, it was whatever to me. To Dang. Honest, so that's what you gotta step do. Step up your game. Come on, step up your game. Like, but that's what you gotta do. You know, when you really bought it, it's like, well, I'm here to race, bro. I don't okay, care about I that. You, you know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, I was on the line getting hyped, whatever. But, you know, my goal, my goal was to get under three hours, but I knew for sure that, like, I needed to pace myself. So like, and, and I was just gonna, my plan was to do the questions on the run part within the first half, just in case anything happened that I would just be able to lock in and just focus <laughs> onto the race. So that I actually idea. did. That was a good idea. No, yeah. And I actually did like really much follow what I thought in my head to go. And like, I, I my first mile, I think y'all check me out on Strava, Super Hot Pots, you know, fact check me. My first, actually, I could probably look it up right now if I really wanted to. But like my first mile was only like 650. Like I really was, I really was doing what I was supposed to be doing, bro. Like I was having fun talking to people, 650, 640, 642, 642, 648. So I was like, I was running pretty relaxed, but I would still say I was kind of like, not like aerobically pushing myself, but I was pushing it. Like if I really wanted to, I could have just been running like, you know, seven flats or whatever, mm-hmm. but my goal was to come through around 125, so I had that space too. And I did, I did, I came through 125. Also, I mean, I came into it with the mentality of like, like like I only had a couple runs where I practiced doing goos and the most goos I took during my runs was two, but I knew that I was gonna need more than that. So I had packed four and I picked up one on the course. So I ended up taking one, at, I took a goo at like mile four, I think again at mile eight, I think again at like mile like 13, then again at like 16, 17, and then again at like 18. So like, I, and, I, and I was like, so the most of the race, I was really just focused on my body. Mm-hmm. Like I was, cause like the pace I was running wasn't fast for me. So I was just like thinking to myself, like checking in. Cause when I ran a half a couple months ago, I got cramps in my calves. So I was like, okay, let me, you know, every- Yeah, make sure this, this doesn't happen again. Yeah, every every checkpoint, I was like, okay, I'm gonna drink. Cause you know, I definitely didn't want stomach problems, you know, yeah. but I was like, let me try. Yeah, I didn't want that to happen again. So I was like, okay, do I need water? Do I need to get electrolytes? And I was, I can't believe, I was surprised at how much I was able to eat and drink during this race and it not really affect me. Yeah. But basically like, we, well, this is all build up to because we get to around, and it's even hard to say, bro. Like, I have friends that were telling me before this, like, yeah, there's gonna be like, 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 like I would say, like in the beginning of the race, there's a lot of hills, and your legs could feel kind of heavy. And I was fine, but then there was like a certain point too where I just felt great. So it's sometimes hard to like think about what was happening at which mile because you're kind of just going. And I feel like at like mile thirteen or fourteen. I was like running and I started running with this dude and he just was like, he had just great energy, bro. He was just a, he had great energy. So I was like, man, like I'm gonna get this dude on for questions on the run real quick. Yeah. I was like, yo, can I get you on my phone? He's like, yeah, bro. And I was like, yeah, I got you, bro. Pull out, as soon as I, I pull out my phone, I'm about to, about to take a video and then I was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and my calves, my calves just cramp up so bad. He's like, oh shoot, bro, just take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. <laughs> I'm like, oh shoot, we good, we good, we good. I'm like, bro, it's just a little calf cramp, you know? Just a little calf cramp. So that happens to the best of us. Yeah. I just stopped on the side and I stretched it out. People were coming up. They're like, are you okay? 
you know, I'm like, nah, bro, like, I'm good. Let me just, I'm let me just yeah, let me just stretch. Let me just stretch. And then after that, I don't know. I literally, there was points in the race, because I, man, I may even cramped up once before that, and I stopped for a quick second, not as long as this one. Yeah, it's not that minor setback for a major comeback. Like, yeah, come and you know when, you, you, when you're about to get a cramp, you kind of feel it in your body, mm-hmm. but you just kind of like, you're just like, oh. Yeah. And there was points in that room, at that section, where I was running, and I was just like, no. I told my body. I literally was like, no, stop. <laughs> not what? Stop. <laughs> and it worked. I'm not even going to cap. I showed, I told my body, stop it. Stop doing that. And it worked from like mile 13 to like, probably like, it worked for like 13 to like 17. It worked to the point to where like, I caught up to that dude that I was talking to and I passed him and he was like, oh, okay. And I was like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? I was like, let's go. Come on. So then we get to like mile, that's probably mile like 17 or something. Like honestly, I'm guessing right now. Maybe that's mile 17, mile 16. At this point, I'm like, let's let's lock in. You know what I'm saying? Because I can feel it in my body. I can start feeling like, you know, stuff's starting to tighten up, but I'm just like, Musa, like Musa, Musa. I get to like mile like 17 and I, or like Musa, you know? I get to like mile 17, 18. I think I stopped one more time because maybe I had like a cap. I maybe had a little bit of a hammy, but it wasn't that bad. And then mile 20, I hit my boy, Derek. Up. He, he catches up to me on the run. He's like, let's go. And he starts running with me. And I'm like, bro, like, I need you right now. I was like, this is so perfect, bro. I, you don't understand. Like, I'm struggling right now. He's like, what? I was like, bro, I've been cramping for like the past, like, like three to four miles, bro. I need you to run with me because I don't know what's going to happen to you. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. About like, like about like two minutes later, Charlie horse. Y'all know what Charlie horse is? Right in your hamstring. I got a Charlie horse in my hamstring. And I'm like, ah, ah, so bad to the point where I had to, we had to first, I was just like, ah, I can stand. I was like, ah, it'll go away. Like, you know, it wasn't going away. It was just getting worse. Like I could feel the muscle just uh-huh, bro. twisting and tightening yeah. in my hamstring. That I had to like, and to a point where I was like, Derek, Derek, bro, I need you to stretch me. Like, stretch me out. Like, I had to lay down on my back and do the hamstring, hamstring stretch. And at that point, all these people, like five, six people started, the cops came up. They're like, yo, you need us to the call cops? somebody. The five oh came up trying to call somebody to help me. I had people like getting biofreeze, like spraying it on me, just spraying stuff on me. I had people giving me the tool. The, the massage, massage gun, the massage, massage gun, gun like everybody. Everyone, people must like Derek massaging me out. I'm like, come on, come <laughs> on, bro. We gotta get back. I'm like, cause I'm like, bro, cause I was knew I, was, I knew I was ahead of pace. I was like, bro, if I could just fix this right now, like I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. So from the fans' perspective, from our spectators' perspective, we were supposed to see you at mile 18, but we missed you. So we we're at the finish line, and you're running good, like 30k, and like I think 30k and 35k, you're like 649 pace. I didn't know you were like 640, then the next one was like 645, and it was like 639 pace as you're going through each 5K. I'm like, dang, Aaron's like moving good. I was picking it up, honestly. And then I remember on the phone, it like said like ETA for like estimated arrival time for like your 30K. And it was like, let's just say it was like uh, 843, like AM or whatever. And so like, it's like 8.54 AM and I'm like, dang, this hasn't came through yet. I'm all like, shoot, I don't know if, is Aaron okay? And then it finally comes in and the pace goes all the way down to 709. I'm all like, hold on. Then I was like, I was telling John and everybody, I was like, man, this man died, bro. He's hitting the wall. Like the, the worst thing's coming through. And then it just took a long time to see you to the finish. But yeah, go ahead. I was like, this Basically man hit the wall. Basically from mile to, I, I can't even, you know, it's a blur to be honest, but from mile, because I started cramping before mile 20, to be honest. I probably maybe started cramping as early as 15, 16. But they weren't as bad. But yeah. the cramps and they only amplified every single mile after that. And you, if you look at my from mile fifteen to twenty, I was still running pretty fast with stopping. Like, and then, uh, but mile twenty, it just got to a point that like <laughs> from mile twenty and beyond, it just got to a point where I, I was stopping like every single mile. Like, so like look at like I think mile eighteen I stopped because I was running like fourteen. I was like. 20, 627, 32, 623, 17, I ran 618. And then 18 is a 647. And I'm pretty sure that's because I stopped. And then you go to mile 20, I ran 925. And mile 21, I ran 1236. Jeez. So, that, so those two miles, I was like 
cramping like so bad, like getting on the floor, people stretching me out, massaging me, yeah. eating and eating everything. And then after that, I got back up and I was like, nah, we gonna make it still, Derek. I'm gonna get there. And I ran a 709, a 705, and a 639. I was pushing, bro. And then I hit mile 25, whole body, but like cramp, seized up. Uh, uh. And then this lady, old woman comes up to me, up to, up to us, and she's like, here, you gotta drink this. And it was like a cola. It was a Shasta cola. I was like, what? Drank that? Helped me, bro. I was like, oh, Extra instantly. Ace. Instantly. But yeah, from... I, I ate from also from mile 20 to 26, bro. I probably ate. I was trying to do everything I could to like make my cramps go away. I was drinking pickle juice, um, bananas, uh, oranges, applesauce. I was just trying to get whatever fuel I could into my body yeah. to try and help me get across the line. I don't know. I'm not a nutrition expert. Obviously, there's something wrong with the way I did my nutrition, but. Also, I think there was something right because I think it could have been worse. <laughs> I think it could have been a lot worse. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could have not finished, you know? Maybe I did need to eat all that food in the last six miles, bro. Like, to be honest, when I yeah. really think about it, like, because I, I I, mean, I still ran I still ran 310. I was probably on pace for like 250, maybe even two. Maybe I could even rope 250, I, I think, because I was, I was never like uh, aerobically like in the hole. Yeah. I was just my body. Just like, dang, just like my body was just like my. I didn't even. I didn't even get the chance to feel my legs feel heavy. You know, when you're like, oh, my legs are feeling heavy. It was like my legs didn't even feel heavy. They just started cramping, bro. Yeah. So I'm just like, that's the only thing that I'm disappointed about is that I didn't really get to run. Like, I didn't get to. It was just frustrating at the end. I was just like, dang, bro. Like, I could run every time I tried to run faster. I would just cramp up. I'm like, bro, like. Dang, by, by the time I got to mile 25, I just was like, bro, like, I just gotta, my friend convinced me, like, bro, you just gotta finish at this point, bro, like, I just like, all right. And, and I bet 310 is not a bad time, you know, it's not, it's, it's not better than Chris Chavez, you know, running 259, but. That took him 10 years, though. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, bro. I love you, Chris, that's my guy. But, you know. He is faster than me, though. He is faster than me. can't cap, respect. You got that over respect you. on Marathon and, um, I have respect on it, for sure. For just you got that over you, bro. You got that over you. got you. that over me now. Shoot. But completing a marathon, you know? Don't talk to me if you haven't completed one, though. Don't right. talk to me. Hey, right, bro. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going I'm to get in there. I got to get in there at some point. I've seen you. Something about every single time going to a marathon. That's like our, my fourth marathon that I've been to, like, watching. Every time, like, seeing that and seeing people, like, push to their absolute limit makes me want to go do it. Like, just, like... Man, what is it like to reach that level? I remember watching Hella when he did, um, uh, what is it, Dead Threadville? Dead Leadville. Leadville. Yeah, that's crazy. When we watched that documentary, I'm like, dang, I want to do a hundred miler now. Yeah. Cause I'm all like, I just want to, how's that, what does that really feel like? And that's something that like, something know. like running, like I feel like I could actually like do besides like, I don't want to swim with oh, sharks, yeah. you know, but like running and pushing myself to my, that right limit. Running Leadville, I don't, I definitely gained more respect for ultras running this and I understand now how they be eating all that random stuff because your body just needs like energy yeah. like it just needs it but I don't know how people be running these hundred milers especially the people even if you run slow but shout out to my homie Raj bro he be running a hundred miles seven minutes in the sleep in the sleep I don't know how you do it how you do that and your body doesn't break down like that's what I'm even forget about how fast it is it's just like that's just so much to put onto your body The day before you actually went out there and did that, and while I was in the sky flying here to California, it was going down in Southern Cal, you feel me? We had the marathon on, on Sunday, but the day before that, at the 10 San Juan Capistrano, Orange County, was the fourth year of the 10, the sound running 10. Our first time not being That's there. That's kind of crazy. Our first time, but like, shoot, we got things going on. We got things going on. Our first time not being there. Super fast races. That went down. We want to give y'all a quick little running report before we get out of here. This is a shorter little podcast this week. I want to start here, Aaron. I think we may be losing the 
probably the most exciting girl in high school track and field maybe ever. Sadie Engelhart it runs runs U.S. number five high school history, 40970. On the broadcast, the, the commentator was saying, uh, like, she's not going to run high school anymore. That no. she's just focusing on pro. She's talking about she did. That. She was talking in her interview like that she doesn't know what meets are left. I, I, some people yeah, are she's coming. going to NC State? Yeah, she's going to NC State. But that's in two years. So she's only a junior. You feel me? So, but I don't know. I, I feel like she's still running high school. I feel like, can't you still do that? Does that forego her high school anything but either way she runs 409 70 she was also talking about how like she's looking forward to getting to u.s olympic trial standard so that is like kind of like what her is focus. that do we know that standard she would have to run like three seconds faster so like 406 around around 406 so that's what she's really shooting for this season but it would be a bummer to see sadie not run high school i don't know what she's absolutely doing yet she didn't like confirm or deny that that's what doing the broadcast that she's not running high school but um uh, it'll be interesting. It's crazy to see her actually win that race. When she was announced for that, I didn't expect Sadie to go out there and just win and like win that decisively. But it's Sadie Engelhart. Like, she's a beast. No, it, it's been cool just seeing her whole journey from her freshman year up to now. And she's always just been very like level headed, very mature and humble from yeah. the time she was a freshman. So it feels like she was built for this. So, best of luck to her. Uh, I think she'll get to 406 and get that standard. And then I think, I mean, at NC State is a long ways away, but I I think that that's a great school for her. That's where Kaylin Tui went, and Kaylin Tui was, you know, yeah. a different animal, same beast. So, like, I think that'd be a perfect place for her uh, to develop for a couple years, too. No, yeah, absolutely. If she would, if she would run that 406, that Olympic standard, that would make her second fastest all time. In high school Mary, history. Behind Mary Kane. Mary Kane ran 404. Shout so, out to Mary. I saw Mary Kane yesterday. That's crazy. So it, it would be special to see her do something like that for sure. Uh, yesterday as well in the 1500 on the men's side, Karen Tunitive, he won the men's race. But I think the real story got to come from Matthew Sensowitz. He opened up his season uh, and this is going to be his last season in 2024. He opened up 338, three, 338 or let me make sure, let me get this right, let me get this right. Opened up in a 338, 88, finishing in fifth place. And this is going to be his last season. He had an interview with Flow Track, uh, talking about how he wants to end his career on a high note pretty much. And he's seen other people through the sport. You know, his dad ran, he's seen his mom and his coach and his dad coaching this time. He's seen people come and go that stopped when they really need to stop, you know, and like it, it doesn't look good for him. From what I looked at from that interview, he wants, he doesn't want to be in that situation. He wants to end on his own term, on his own terms. He actually had a good quote in there talking about how like, there's no better place than being in the shoes. You feel me? He feels like there's like when you're a coach or anything like that, uh, it's nothing like being a competitor and really running the race. And I think that's 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 very true for, for Matthew Sensowitz. And this is going to be a special last season for him. And I just want to be the first one to say that, like, we need to give Matthew Sensowitz a farewell tour. You feel me? Like everywhere this man races, I don't know what, like he should be, if we gonna adopt something from like other sports, it should be a farewell tour. And anywhere this place races next, after he races, y'all should bring this man in the middle of the field and honor him for him racing in your last season. Cause this man winning 2016 Rio Olympics was one of the biggest things in US history for the year of 2010s, you feel me? One of the biggest things in the 2010s Matthew Sensowitz, thank you for what you've done, bro. We're gonna be supporting you this last season. That this is this is that's, that's mean, awesome. No, nah, when you think about best fifteen hundred American fifteen hundred meter runners of all time, I think about Lagat, and then like who's that, who's next? Centro. Yeah, is it Centro? Is it? I'm trying to think. Is who are? Is there someone we're missing? There's other people, but they like, they haven't medaled like that. But he's also just in in modern, like in yeah. the two thousands since in this century, like well in the nineties and back then there was nobody or eighties like he's when really he, one of the only people that have ever gotten an Olympic gold medal in the fifteen yeah. Americans. So it's like I think there maybe be one other person. So it's like literally he's top three all time for American fifteen hundred 
greats. You throw Alan Webb someone in there because like the records or something, but like he is, he has to be one of the greatest, and he. But he's also like a polarizing. He's a polarizing athlete, you know. Yeah, and just for a reminder, the only other person. There's two people that medaled at the Olympics in the 1500 before Matthew Sensiewicz, and that came in 1908 and 1904. That's crazy. Like, come on, man. Come on, man. Like, the other person that medaled during this century for America was Leo Manzano in 2012 when he got that silver. But besides then, for another person, American, the medal before then was Jim Ryan all the way back in 1968. And Matthew Sensiewicz won that race in a fast time, too, I believe. He won that race in a 330. Like in a fast fifteen hundred meter, beating one of the greatest fifteen hundred meters of all time, no, Asbel Kiprop. Like when he won the race, he ran slow. I, wasn't it still like three thirty? No, it was three fifty. Uh, oh shoot! Hey, that's it how was, you, the, the, the tactician. Ultimate it was the tactician. most tactical race we've ever seen of all time. But I remember sitting down. I remember watching that in Big Bear with my cross country team, and I couldn't believe what this man was. Pulling. Oh yeah, you're right. Three fifty flat. I can't remember what this man was pulling off. I couldn't believe what he was pulling off, how he controlled that race. I thought it was so beautifully executed. I was I was amped. I still think some people hate on that race, but to me, that was one of the greatest. That was one of the greatest uh, strategic races I've ever seen. I think that might be the greatest. He was not supposed to win that race. And how he controlled that and put himself in position and was strong enough to hold off the entire field and of a, a convicted doper of Asbel Kiprop. Like, that, that that race was dope. Just off that race, you know, yeah, I definitely got him up there. Like, But you mentioned some hitters with Jim Run in there. Uh, no, but he's right there, bro. He's right there. He's right there. He's, he's, top, he's five, like, top five American, maybe top three. It's a debatable where you put him. I'm going to put him top three, bro. I'll yeah. put him top three. It's just influence. His influence yeah. over... Like people were cutting, cutting their, getting, getting the shaved head. That's facts. People were getting the buzz cut. When he was on Oregon Project, he was the he face. Was that boy, like he was the man. He was the golden boy, bro. Like, like intimidating. The Girl. celebrations, like everybody was imitating, trying to beat this he man for that. years. Like, come he on, was that boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was. He Even was. when he hit he, the dab, he brought a whole different. That dab was corny. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, that dab was corny. Bro. It went hit the dab. I respect it though. He that was, dab was who corny, else was bringing though. the dab in the track though? Nobody though. That's why I respect it though. That's why. Like, like, okay, he was bringing a he was bringing a different energy to it. So he's had an amazing career. It's been really fun. It's been really fun to watch him race, and it's been fun to see him interact and go back and forth with the flam- fans. We gotta yeah. talk about the elephant now. All that drama in there, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm gonna apologize, bro. I disrespected you. I disrespected them with the last name. It was I was trying to be funny, but I should not say <laughs> that. I should not call it you cilantro. That was messed up. Oh, I'm bro, right why are you saying it again? I'm just being honest, cause so if he actually listens to this, he can actually. If he ever actually listens to this, know that I I really do apologize, bro. Like I'm just be straight up, I straight up. That wasn't right. That wasn't right. You know. He that boy. He that boy. Hey, so any meat directors out there, bro? Anytime Central Race is next. You better honor this man. If he races at Prefontaine, which I assume he will race at Prefontaine, I better see this man on the field. What are we honor. gonna do? What are we gonna do to honor him when we see him? I don't know. We're gonna do something. We're gonna think of something. We're gonna think of something. What should we we're gonna think of something? We're Let us know. Hit us up if you got an idea. Maybe there's something that we could do for him that would yeah. be cool too. What can we do for for Centro? All right, two more things, then we'll get out of here. We gotta talk about the 10 gay the 10 Ks. First, Sagay Gerber Salam, she dominated the field on the women's race, ninth fastest ever, 2948, fastest on US soil uh from Ethiopia, dominated the field. Uh you watched, you were able to watch this race. Like, what was going through your mind when you seen this? Bro, I'm gonna be straight up. I, I and this is not this is not no no shade. I don't know what was going on with the broadcast. Like <laughs> me and my dad was watching it, and I was like, "Who is in first? Is there?" It made it seem like I was confused if she was in first or if Wayne was in first. So I I I didn't know what was happening, low key until like a last couple laps. Then I was like, "Oh, like homie, Sagay, so she about to she about to run like a top ten. Fastest time, yeah, ever. Like, like she was so far ahead. Like, Wayne was far ahead of a group, and then she was even further ahead. I was like, "What is happening?" 
And Alicia Munson was with her for a little bit. Yeah, she dropped out. And she dropped out. So it was just like, yo, like we keep saying, bro, women's distance running is just... Insane. Yeah, it's insane from the eight... You can say you can say middle. From the 800 all the way up to the marathon. It's insane right now. And it's just like... Oh, wow. I didn't realize that Segei, uh, she's only she's only 23 years old. It's so, wild, man. but it really, I think it really speaks to the testament because I didn't, I wasn't really familiar with Segei before this. And the fact that she went out there and did this at the J. Sarah track at the 10, it kind of solidifies more and more that like, this is the place to be, right. you know, for distance running. Like, it's weird that it's in San Juan Capistrano. It's just the high school in Orange County. But that has become the premier place for distance runners and a breakout store. A breakout star has really been born through that in Segega Rasalam. Like we're gonna be seeing what she does at the Olympics for Ethiopia and well, it's gonna be exciting. We need somebody we, Hannah, Hannah Borstein, that's the homie. I just feel like these Africans pop up and then everyone's like, Oh, they came out of nowhere. But nah. Well, she's been doing it. She's been doing it. We need somebody covering these people because, like, those two, the two girls that ran the that ran World Indoors, they're like sisters, I think. Yeah. And they're nineteen. Yeah. Like, how do we not know? How did those people go undiscovered for so long? Like, Ethiopia got so many young hitters. Well, maybe it's just that just America, we just be full of ourselves at times. For real, know? though. We, we just be full of ourselves, and yeah, like we just be geeking out on like when there's just other things happening across the world but no you're definitely right you're definitely right all right last thing though but and this is like now we're going to go to the epitome of that of geeking out about things that are happening in our country because the men's 10,000 was kind of the epitome of that definitely with nico young running the u.s number three all time in the 10k also grant fisher winning that race accomplishing that olympic standard we had we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight guys getting the Olympic standard in that loaded 10K field, all led by Grant Fisher winning that race. Bro, what were your thoughts from that race? When I seen that Nico Young got second place, that was my biggest takeaway. I'm all like, what? This man just dominated the week before winning the 5K and the 3K, and now he's doing this? Now he's in his first ever 10K? He's doing this? Can he make the Olympic trials team? We've talked about that for the past couple of weeks when we did these running reports. Can Nico Young make a 5K or 10K team? And after doing this, racing with some of the some of the best guys in the world, I feel like he probably can. But what, what were your takeaways? You watched the race live. Yeah, I did actually watch this race live. So let's go down the list. I'll start off with Grant Fisher. That dude is head and shoulders. The world guy, class. World class athlete. You know, just the, the tactics that he ran in this race. Like, he didn't lead very much until the end. If you were watching early on, like, there was a point where, like, it was Abdi Hamid, Luis, and there was someone else in front. And Grant, I feel like Grant was kind of, like, hidden a lot of this race. And he just found his spots and moved up. And almost Nico kind of did the same. He was kind of just in the pack, moving strategically, but seeing him kick the last like 300 to 200 meters was really impressive to me. He looked kind of like bigger. Well, he's a tall dude, but he just looked very, very strong. Like yeah. when he went to his arms and he was lifting in the last 100. Like look at how 26.5204, 26.5272. So when they came around the last 200, Nico was like in third or fourth place. It was actually, I think, Mo was ahead because you know Mo was yeah, always going to... Yeah, I think gonna... Mo and Grant, they were battling. And yes, then, yes. Yeah, it fell back. Yeah, so the way that, that Nico kind of maneuvered out and pushed up to the front was was impressive. And then, um, how, how do you say his name? Optum. 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 Optum and Adrian. Like, Adrian was leading a lot of this race. He's been having a great year, the 1256, now 2655. He's looking like someone who also is very much world class, but Hoptum looks great as well. Flow Track kind of forgot about him that he was like, yo, this dude might get the get the NCAA record right and he, now. And today. he did. He went under he also went under the NCAA record. Yeah. So he ran a really impressive race as well in a very gutsy race. And then last person I'll talk about, 
uh, Edwin Caracott, the first podcast guest we ever had on this man. Just happy that this man's finally signed, and he's just He's been having a great year as well, yeah, I tracks. believe. Didn't he win earlier the sound running cross country? Yeah, league? yeah, yeah. Yeah, now he's running twenty six fifty seven, getting the standard. So like, yeah, no, it, it, this was actually a really good race. It was fun to watch. It's gonna be really exciting just to see how all these guys progress, especially Nico Young and Ab- Abtum Samuel. Both dudes are in college. Both guys are were just peaking at one point, you know, at indoors. Now kind of gonna hit this dead period and really planning for, I bet for both of them, to try to make the Olympic team, yeah. you know, like that is on their mind. So just seeing what are they going to do next? And even for all these guys, though, someone like a Woody Kincaid and like a Mohamed, I'm pretty sure Mohamed is not happy about losing a Nico Young, you feel me? And like that, somebody that is definitely world class, somebody that on any given day can get a medal in the 10K like what is how is he going to propel propel himself on this and then as well grant fisher like you said he's been head and shoulders above a lot of people but like this dude is he hasn't he like he didn't win the mill rose you know he didn't win that race over josh kerr but besides that he's looked dominant when he came back the next week and he ran that 5k at uh bu looked dominant just right off of Woody kincaid's uh american record so like a lot of people are in great spots, and it looks good. It's gonna be exciting U.S. Olympic trials, to say the least. Definitely, it's gonna be it's, U.S. trials. Is gonna be kind of hard to pick. I mean, I only believe like Joe Klecker, twenty seven oh nine. Not, I'm sure he wanted to get the standard at this, yeah. you know, on this day. But that Joe Klecker is someone that he's been he's impressed me, and he's someone that I think about like he's gonna make the team, like either in the ten k. You know what I mean? And then Abdi, Abdi Hamid, like, he made the team last year in, in the 5K, right? Was the 5K? Yeah, 5K. He made it in the 5K. So it's still, like, and then you got Woody as well. So it's, like, Nico, he's got tough competition. Like, these guys are only going get, to get better, and so is he. So is he. But he's coming off of a championship race, so he's definitely, like, ready for this. Um... So it's going to be... But for him, to like, it's not even the fact that he ran that fast, but it's the fact that he ran that fast and got second. That's the thing. Because it's showing that how he can maneuver through those fields and like really wins the big time races, he's up for that challenge. So it'll be interesting to see how he does well, at the trials. When 2652 like is fast. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's not like they going to come and run 2630 or something. Like at the, at the trials, you know, it, it, it'll probably be, it might be slower than that. So it just shows that he has the the fitness to be there. So like you said, like... But like a lot of those guys have the fitness. Yeah, a lot so of the like college guys the have day, the fitness. Can you put yourself in the position to win? Yeah. Like 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 Matthew Sensuous. And we haven't seen... And then it's like... And then you still got to think about Sean. Like Sean McGordy too. So like there's so many guys in, in this 10K. And we know the 5K team is going to be just as tough to make yeah, with a lot of the same players. Yeah, about the same, same runners. About the same runners. But... Yeah, it's going to be exciting. A super, super exciting track season. Uh, man, that's 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 really it, bro. I'm hyped. I'm hyped for in this track season. I'm hyped to be back in California. I'm hyped for the next step of the Two Black Brothers podcast and everything that we got next coming up from y'all. It's going to be an exciting 2024. It's only March. April is right around the corner. And I'm glad oh, that y'all, wait. yeah, I'm glad that y'all are on the ride with us and rocking with us uh if this is on youtube and this type of video i hope you all i think we're going to start doing some more videos and stuff more and just and uh, appreciate y'all sticking on with the ride anything else nah man just give us a thumbs give us a thumbs up on uh youtube uh make sure you rate the podcast leave a comment and i just want to say appreciate everyone that was supporting me during this marathon y'all are really showing me a lot of love i got a lot of messages from everyone telling me congratulations and thank you thank you that definitely that definitely made me feel good and powered me before before the race during the race and you know right now i'm about to make this drive home so appreciate y'all hey see y'all next week on two black runners podcast let's get it